This is actually issue number one, <laughs> the very first issue. So the flavor was just this amazing magazine. We had The Rocket, we had other magazines, but nothing that had emphasis on hip hop. We came up with the idea in 91. We had both had backgrounds writing. I was interning at Columbia and uh, working at Tower Records. Rachel was at Peaches and Sony College Rep. I think that was one of the cool things about our magazine was that everyone was a volunteer. So everybody volunteered their time. This is the blood, sweat, and tears of a lot of people who yeah. did this absolutely for free. Like maybe they got into go got to go to a cool show, but they got to interview their heroes. They got to interview the people that they loved, but they did this for everyone. Did this for free. We all brought something fresh to the magazine. We brought honest opinions. You know, we weren't necessarily like professionals. We didn't know the difference between calling the radio promotions department and the marketing people and the publicists. And they went around the publicists and set up interviews for us, even though they weren't supposed to. And so through our not knowing what we were doing, we got more accomplished. Initially, you know, we were at Kinko's just like, whipping this out like, you know, like two or three in the morning. And then we started looking at offset printing the second year and we moved into newsprint in the last part of it. The biggest question mark was always like, are we gonna sell enough ads to actually go to the printer? I think when we moved into the office, when we weren't doing it, you know, in the basement anymore, that was when we knew. It was like, okay, this is a real publication. People are counting on us. When Trey came in, she really expanded the distribution really quickly when she came in. The circulation was roughly around 5,000. The content of the magazine, it was in demand. We were able to get the ads and the distribution kind of peaked out at 70,000. We had a global reach. Whatever we pressed up, it was never enough. Every Tower Records in the world carried the flavor. It was free at any tower in the greater Seattle area, but everywhere else it was a dollar. And people started writing to us and contacting us from places like Amsterdam and France and ended up writing for the magazine, covering their scene and the flavor. I also managed the Cross the Globe section, so I had people in, in a lot of different markets report on their hip hop scene, you know, big DJs and things like that. It was just all happening at once. And so to be able to go out to events and experiencing these things and hearing this music and when it's like brand spanking new and no one else is hearing it and then being able to write about it, it was like I was processing it in real time with the reader. It's, it's just a unique experience for me to like be able to not only interview these people but write about their music. Nas was another really cool one because it was at a time where he was just breaking. I mean, it was pretty pretty fresh, pretty early on. This was a turning point for us, putting Nas on the cover. We were the first people to put Nas on the cover, and there were some other publications who were not too happy about that. We had J. Rule and Damage, we had Dell on the cover, we had um, Lord Finesse. We were trying to put artists on the cover before the people had heard of them, whereas Typically with a magazine, you want people people have heard of so they could sell it. We weren't trying to do that. We were giving away the magazine for free. So we just wanted to go out there and promote artists that we loved and help them be successful. The Flavor was not a local magazine. It was a magazine based out of Seattle, but it wasn't a magazine, you know, showcasing Seattle hip hop. Quite a few people had a hard time grasping that. I think for us, we had pushback from the local people about not putting local people on the cover, but we were an internationally distributed magazine. And for us, it's like if we put you on the cover and no one picks up the issue, how valuable is that versus us putting you in an issue with a national artist on the cover that people will pick up and read and they might not have seen you otherwise. My whole thing was is I just wanted to see people from the town shine. There was a group in the early, uh, early to mid-90s named Ghetto Children. And I get a call one day from this guy from Geffen Records. And he's like, you know, hey, I keep seeing, you know, you're writing about this group called the Ghetto Children. You know, he was intrigued by the name and everything. And so shot him some music, you know, some tapes. And um, he really liked what he heard. And he actually presented the group with what's called a developmental deal. And so those were some of the fun things about writing for that magazine was, you know, covering people like Ghetto Children, interviewing Source of Labor. You think of um, think of an MC or a lyric from the song, like this one, Two Across. Like Two Across, um, Don't Make Her Laugh. 
Yeah, don't you make her, make her laugh. That's the whole Sparky D song. Carl's crossword puzzles, which are awesome. Man, that dude knows everything about hip hop. I think we were the only people that really had a crossword puzzle like this. Besides the New York Times. So uh, I wrote the questions down and I took it to another editor of ours and she got this magical crossword puzzle edit maker on her, on her computer. You feed them in and the, and the computer and it, and it spits it out like this. Carl did an excellent job with that because he's definitely someone who's very knowledgeable about um, hip hop. You know, he didn't take it easy. <laughs> you had to know your hip hop history. Everybody be like, man, your puzzle is too hard, man. You should make them easier. We would give prizes if people actually could send the correct puzzle in, and they almost never did. And one day we got a letter from someone named SK Honda who had completed the crossword puzzle and ended up coming to work with us at the magazine. It started with the crossword, that's how we met her. It was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun, a lot of satisfaction that came out of it. Really proud of what it was, what it became. And we were in the trenches together and there's, there's nobody that'll understand what we went through and how awesome it was for us to be this tight-knit crew that would work into the wee hours of the night and put out this fantastic content and that we're all very proud of. It feels good to be a part of something like that. Um, it's definitely held in high regard. It was something that we were all passionate about. Um, thanks for putting me on. I didn't come to Seattle for, for nothing. I came out here and I did something. Thank you.